Welcome to the Whiskey Vault. I'm Daniel. I am Rex, and today we have a gift from the Titan of Whiskey, Harry Falcon. Daniel, in the distance, do you hear that? Wait, um, I gotta put work on that. I gotta get in character. Yes, okay, good. Yes, I hear it. Sure, sure. it's good enough. Good enough. <laughs> Could it be? I think it probably might. Is damn it, you really just son of a. This um, light color, what do we got? This is a uh, independent bottler. Oh, cool. Either. Scotland. Yeah. Right? Okay. Berry Brother and Berry Bro and Rudd. Yeah. Right? And it's a Kulila. Yes. Yes. So they chose a barrel mm -hmm. of Kulila. Yes. And there we go. Okay. Now, I'm excited because uh, I actually, there's some people that really dislike Kulila. I'm going to compare this to the 12 because this is an 11 year old Kulila. Mm hmm. 55% alcohol, mm -hmm. right? Distilled in 2007, bottled in 2019. So if I remember correctly, this is uh, an Isla distillery that you'll very often find um, uh, being sourced by other distillers. If and they're for looking blends. For blends, if they're yeah. looking for an Isla. This, so is what, this is often the smokiness that you get. Johnny now. Walker, Black Bottle, yeah. uh, Bells, White Horse, um, right, a lot of these blends when you're looking for smoke, you get coil it. And, yeah. But when they started releasing their own stuff, yeah, it's super interesting. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Now, some people aren't a fan. So, I actually really like coil. I like it too. My memory of coolila, coolila, though. Is it coolila or coolila? Uh, it's coolila. Coolila. <laughs> <laughs> my memory is it's good. Um, not necessarily my favorite, favorite Isla. I think. Um, if I'm looking for layers and complexity and some drama, it's, yeah. it's definitely peaty. Don't get me wrong. Yes. That's the hero flavor, but it's also a little simpler. It's lighter, and I think yes. it has a, a slightly simple mid palate. So it starts really vibrant, right. and then it just sort of hollows out, in my memory, yeah. this sort of hollows out, and then it ends with this spectacular smoky finish. But that's that middle hollow note that I think makes it blend well. So I we think it helps it play well with others. We'll see how the memory compares to this. Right. It's a single barrel, because sometimes single barrels, this is a single barrel? Mm -hmm. Sometimes single barrels, they can do their own unique special thing. So let's see. No surprises on the nose. That's what I'm expect expecting that's from a cool Smoky, like. sweet. Yeah. And then the, the nature of the peat, the character of the peat. Um, it's not going to be a savory ham. It's going to be kind of like a saltier, earthier type. Yeah, of. the taste, it is. There's just nothing at first, and then there's this burst of brine oh, yeah. smoke. Definitely salty. And then it just sort of goes, and then it lingers with smoke. Yeah. But there's no mid-palate. Notice that it's, it's kind of hollow feeling. If you like your saltier peat presentations, that'll do it. That yeah, is, yeah, yeah, yeah. It's one of the saltier peat notes I think I've experienced in an Isla for sure. I mean, the so maybe saying there's no mid palate is overstating it. What, what I mean is, where there would be this like rich, oily, lingering mid palate, it's sort of thin and spicy and light, like summery, right? So I think if one of the things I really enjoy about most Islas is after you acclimate to just the big, intense smokiness. Mm -hmm. You start to pick out some layers and complexity, and you get some sweeter elements, some fruitier elements. You get the malt layer and all this stuff. If I think 
on average, like the Lafroigs and the Lagavulins and the Ardbegs and the what have you, those are maybe rocking like five distinct layers of flavor. Kalila, I'm thinking it's like two or three layer, layers of flavor. It's Try just, the 12. Yeah. Proof down to 43. The 12 so, is actually slightly darker. But it's proof down to 43. Oh, wow. Different on the nose for sure. Yeah, the nose is way more musty, earthy on the 12. And, and also it's a bit sweeter too. The 12 mm -hmm. is a bit sweeter compared to. Uh, this one's way more aggressive on mm -hmm. the nose and on the palate, but I think proof is part of that. Wow. But this independent bottling one is it's it, vibrant. So this does absolutely have more drama compared to the classic 12. The classic 12. I think between the two, I'm really digging the single barrel thing here. Me too. It adds, cranks up the volume a little bit. Um, that I think the, the biggest flavor coming out of the single barrel is going to be that briny, salty character mm -hmm. with that earthy presentation of the peat. I agree. Yeah, I like that. Daniel Holum, he what's the smokiest, briniest whiskeys you can get for $60 or less? Honestly, this is probably one of the briniest so far. <laughs> yeah, it's but you're not gonna be able to get that for $60 or less. Yeah. Uh, honestly, I, I was thinking about this, like the smokiest, the briniest, right. for under $60. Under $60. Okay. So smoky and briny are two different things to me. Okay, yeah. So because I'm gonna say smoky, the smoky. Smoky if, can present a lot of different ways. If it's reasonably accessible, yeah. Then Ardbeg or Lafroig Ten. Ardbeg Ten, Lafroig Ten. I've However, seen, I've seen the in Austin as low as thirty-five dollars. If you can get Brimstone in your area from Balconis, that will hand you your hat. <laughs> right. Yeah. It, but yes, it'll dust it off first. Yeah. Like, but it'll give your. It'll give it back to you. Like a gentleman, a little backhand. Ah, knock your head off, yeah. dust it off, and hand it back. Yeah. <laughs> uh, the interesting thing about uh, Brimstone, that's not an eyelid, we're talking about Texas. Yeah, Texas, the story. Um, year to year, I've had several Brimstones where, you know, this is a recognizably different whiskey from an early Brimstone to a more current Brimstone. But it it's, still, it's like comparing Octomores, though. They're yeah. all still smoky. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Right. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Uh, the. Briny. Did you like it? <laughs> Briny, I would probably go back to Ardbeg and Lafroig, but I would also be willing to talk about some of the, actually the Pete Week stuff from Balconis is aggressively smoky. Mm -hmm. I mean, Balconis, Balvaney. Balvaney. Oh, the okay. Balvaney Pete Week is serious. Yeah. It's taking its job seriously. What is the Ardbeg? Is Corey Vrecken the one with the Whirlpool? Yeah. That I think had a meaningful amount of brininess, of saltiness, yeah. if my memory is correct. I don't remember enough yeah. off the top of my head. Yeah, well, the reason why it stuck with me is because uh, it's called Corvrecan. I think it has like a whirlpool symbol on there. Yeah, it's like, oh, whirlpool, ocean, getting like this ocean brininess, this saltiness right. more than, yeah. But I don't know if, again, you can get $60 for an Isla. That's a tricky ask. That's uh, a tricky depends ask. Depends on the one. Depends on you the can get Lafroig tin some places pretty cheap. No, no, no. I said uh, Lafroig tin I found it for as low as $35. Mm -hmm. but most of the time, I'm finding this stuff for like 70 80 bucks. Ooh, what small shops are you going to? I don't. It's just... I, I, you see people posting pictures on Whiskey Tribe is what yes, you see. I, do, I, do. <laughs> I find in my shopping on Whiskey Tribe... No, like you'll, you'll find people that say... And I peruse other posts. Very, a very common post is somebody will be standing in the liquor store and then they'll show and there's I, a snapshot of the bottles, like which one? And it'll, you'll see like the price point and it's yeah. always interesting to see how much the prices vary from location to location. Joel Edwards. Anyone a super taster? Question mark. Ethanol kind of drowns out everything for me, but I am wondering if I will eventually get past it. Probably. Okay, yeah, you'll get past the ethanol if you keep drinking it. But here's an interesting thought about that. I wanted to address this, because we addressed this in class in school. Yes. S uh, there's this misnomer that super tasters, which are s slang, okay, right? I've heard about this. Is this... Uh... These are people who are hypersensitive okay. to certain things in taste and sm right? Sure. Now... Is it People kind of, think of that as like, oh, you're like the Michael Jordan of tasting. And it's like, no, it's actually a handicap. Okay. It makes you so overly sensitive that even the smallest, tiniest increment of something can become painful hmm. or overwhelming. It's not, it's like being hypersensitive to touch. Okay. Right? It's, it's like sensory develop, it's a sensory disorder. Okay. Right? 
that's like no one takes a kid with a sensory disorder who can't stand like kind of cloth rubbing against his arms right. and is like you're a super feeler. <laughs> that's a that's a skill. It's like no, right. this is not a skill. This is yeah. a handicap, right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. The super taster isn't like someone who tastes like us, but is just really good at it. Right. It's someone with an actual sensory processing disorder. Okay. <laughs> right. And yeah. so this is not something you want to shoot for. And the people are like, yeah, I'm a super taster. They don't understand what a super taster is in, right. that, at, in that context. Fair enough. Um, but in your own experience, it comes down to just the, the acclimation to the ethanol, ethanol layer mm -hmm. um, and then the reference points. Yeah? yeah. The people who are really good at picking up on all of these diverse notes really fast. Yeah, it's just practice. It's just pattern repetition. Yeah, yeah, it's yeah. not super tasting. It's just a lot of experience. Yes, which is an excuse to drink a lot of whiskeys. It's worth helping. <laughs> With Here's to things. fighting, stealing, and drinking. If you fight, may you fight for a friend. You steal, may you steal your lover's heart. And if you drink, may, may you, you drink, drink with us. us.